Okay, well I've set my art studio up to look a little bit more like a photo studio today and that's because I'm trying to get some decent shots of some of the furniture that I've made over the years and I don't have a lot of photographs of my furniture and that's because shooting furniture is difficult. For one, you, you generally need some kind of a backdrop. You can't just take it outside and shoot it in diffused light like you can a painting. Uh, you need to have a backdrop and also I find trying to shoot furniture outside in an overcast day like you would a painting, the wood grain tends to look bland. So I've got two of these fluorescent lamps and I've got this backdrop which is just a canvas tarp I bought at the hardware store or drop cloth I, I should say and I've clamped the drop cloth to shelving that's behind or on this wall mounted on the wall and when you first buy the drop cloth it's going to have a lot of wrinkles in it and a good way to get rid of those wrinkles is to simply spray the tarp down with a light mist of water and I used the pump spray to do that and within a few hours the tarp was dry and most of the wrinkles were gone. The camera I'm using is a Canon uh, T3i and I'm just setting it on auto. I don't really know that much about photography so I'll fool around with the lighting and just change the angles and see what kind of results I get. There's three switches on the back of the lamp and each one of these switches controls a light and basically what I'm going to do is just play around with it until I find something I like. Well, I've spent about an hour shooting a few different pieces and basically what I've found is I'm getting my best results when I turn the overhead lights off my regular working fluorescent lights and just use the lamps, the fluorescent lamps. And also, I'm getting better results with smaller pieces of furniture. The larger the piece of furniture, uh, the more difficult it is to shoot. And I guess in a situation like that, it's a good idea to have a photograph of the piece as a whole and then like if you're making a portfolio and then maybe have one or two detail shots that can show the wood grain and the joinery. Now the canvas drop cloth here is working great as a backdrop and again this works better with smaller pieces on some of the larger pieces I'm starting to the the viewfinder is starting to go off of the backdrop and catch whatever's behind it and uh, in a case like that um, there's not much you can do about it really other than get a, a larger backdrop. But if you're making smaller projects like jewelry boxes and things like that, you'll be fine. And for the most part, it's working for me. I have one table that it, it's kind of hard to shoot with. Also, um, I guess that's about it. I've shot a few of the pieces that I've made, so at the end of the video, I'll run a slideshow. And this piece, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about it. It's kind of a funny story. In 1997, I had a one-man show at the Patterson Museum and somebody had gone to that show and then they contacted me and asked me if I'd make him a duet music stand. He was a classical guitar player and he would take lessons and so his teacher would sit on one side and he would sit on the other. So he wanted the piece to be able to raise and lower and also be able to spin so I guess his teacher could uh, show him what he was working on or something. And he also wanted it to be made out of steel and wood because those are sort of two main materials that I used in that show. And so anyway, uh, we had a conversation about the job and, and I got the go ahead and six weeks later when I showed up with this music stand he took one look at it and he was like whoa I didn't think it was going to look like that and so that's why I have this music stand today and uh, like now it's a funny story but it wasn't a funny story at the time but now I'm real happy to have it because this is one of those projects that I just wouldn't build again it was a really difficult project so I thought uh, it'd be kind of cool to take a closer look at it the base is an inch thick and measures just about nine and a half inches across and I had this cut for me at a machine shop using a lathe. I then welded an inch and a quarter threaded rod to the base making sure it was plumb and the next step was to space these large nuts. There's one here at the bottom. And then another one here at the top and once they were spaced I welded a half inch by three quarter inch rod to each side of the nut. The wood is quarter sawn white oak and I used the table saw to cut a channel into the back of the main support so the half inch by three quarter inch steel rod would fit into that channel. The main body of the music stand is connected to the steel rod 
with a threaded bolt that is behind this walnut plug. And this is what it looks like on the inside of the stand. On the back of the main support there's a very slight angle and I use a table saw to cut this angle and that's just there to soften the look of it up, give it a little bit more of a sculptural look. And then in the front here I use the chamfer bit in the router to cut this. I used a metal punch to sign the piece and this is a method that I see a lot of metal sculptors will use. The shelf that the music rests on is attached to the main support with a lap joint and then it's screwed from behind and then covered with a walnut plug like you can see right here where my pencil point is. The back supports are also attached to the main support with a lap joint and then I screwed through the front of the support and covered it with a walnut plug. So this was just one of those projects where you're inspired to do it the first time but I could never make another one of these. Uh, I just wouldn't want to so I'm happy to have it and so in the end it, it kind of worked out in my favor. Now uh, as far as the photography I hope you picked up a couple of tips. Uh, I really don't know that much about photography but I'm, I'm happy enough with the results. If you know a lot more about photography please leave it in the comment. I'm sure people would be happy to know. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.